have a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. To keep up to date with the community Flat Earth Debate, go to nathanoakley.com and join the Flat Earth Debate community forum. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Now we're currently in the interim stages between two debates, so I'm going to pass over to the panel and you can enjoy the dulcet tones of whoever the hell is in there while I set up for the next live show. All right, so going back to it, okay, that's part of the narrative. OK, the centripetal force is actually the, the fictional because it doesn't exist. So the mainstream narrative has reversed reality. So now all you're doing, all you're doing by saying that science doesn't prove anything is you're giving the spin of mainstream because they know it does prove shit. And if they had to prove shit, they would be proven false. It is it, it disproves it disproves things, but it doesn't prove. And yes, it does. Because there are uh, yes, sorry, it does. I'll just go ahead and put Zinder. Sorry, sorry, Zinder. The point of a hypothesis is to have both an, uh, an alternative and a null hypothesis. You're trying to confirm the alternative hypothesis. That would be your best guess for what is causing the phenomena. That is what you do. However, you also have a null hypothesis, also known as a zero difference result. In other words, you're saying you're trying to confirm the zero difference, i.e. when nothing happens and you don't cause the effect. That's not what you're trying to do, Zinder. You are, in fact, trying to confirm your alternative hypothesis. You're trying to confirm that you've predicted the correct cause of the effect. You're trying to confirm your scientific prediction otherwise known as a hypothesis. So please, Zinder, don't embarrass yourself and say that you're trying to disprove things when you're trying to confirm you've predicted the cause of the effect. Okay? Tell me what, well what, said. what, what, happens, well said. With an, what, what happens with a hypothesis once it makes predictions, Nathan? You once you've predicted, it sorry, it. No, once what, the, sorry, happens, Zinder, once I'll the answer you. Called yeah, I'll answer you. It, I'll answer what? you if you could shut up. So hypotheses don't answer questions; they just formulate a prediction. So to say that a hypothesis answers something is wrong. You validate or invalidate a hypothesis with guess what? A hypothesis test. That would be called an experiment where you try to validate your hypothesis. Unless, of course, you inadvertently get it wrong. Then you validate your null, zero difference. You didn't answer the question. Because you didn't let me speak. I asked you what, what happens with a, a, an hypothesis once it makes prediction and once it's supported by strong evidence. What's Str the strong evidence? It's not supported by strong that? evidence. It's supported no, it's by rejected. systematic experimentation. That's what it's supported by. Not strong. You don't support a hypothesis with strong evidence. You complete bonehead. You support it by performing an experiment. Yeah, and when once the experiment um, confirms it, what's the experiment called? Once you've confirmed yeah, it, what, what, evidence, what, what, Zinder, you've answered your own question. Once it's yeah. what confirmed it, well, then you've confirmed your prediction as correct. You've validated your hypothesis as true. Yeah. You've proven the cause of the effect. No, you don't. Zinder, Zinder, hold on, it real quick. Becomes a theory. It becomes a theory, like... No! The theory of gravity. No, yes. it doesn't become a theory. Do you want me to explain that too, you dumbass? A theory is based on systematic experimentation. Validated hypotheses. So, 
If you've got a theory, it's backed by nothing but. Oh, my bad. Back in a sec. Can we go back to talking, sorry, uh, instead of talking about philosophy of science, can we go back to talking about the oil and water dropped off? Yeah, lake? go on. Experiment. I'm really curious, especially Anthony Riley. You're, you're actually you're, you're, you're sensible and, and, and sort of don't scream and shout. Um, and why do you think it doesn't separate out whilst it's falling? I'm really curious. Who gives a shit? Uh, this doesn't prove gravity. It's not it. scientific evidence for gravity. It's not worth debating about. It's not in the slightest bit different on our side of the argument than it is on your side. Hey, the only sure. bit that's different is your bloody fundamentalist belief in gravity that you still have not given us scientific evidence for. A valid point, dude. Who uh, for me? What? what um, Matt, let me answer your question. Yeah, thanks. I haven't made an. I haven't made a position. I asked for evidence that supported the original assertion that it did or did not make. Because I wasn't clear on what you said, whether it did or did not make any difference whilst in a state of freefall. I asked for yeah. evidence. I didn't. I didn't state a position. No, no. And I was asking you what, what you thought would happen or why would it? Like Who I said, I'm asking, cares? I'm asking, I need to see. We the, are I not the here. For Don't thoughts like and Six. musings, we are asking for a scientist to give us scientific evidence, not Anthony's musings about a non-issue we agree on. So, so first, I think I think I think it is an issue. I think I don't think it's a non-issue. And, and also, the, so I came on here, like I say, initially, is I wanted to to understand how you guys think it works. Like I say, is uh, in terms of what I think, like right, it's a short answer. If you think there's a force, please demonstrate force. Otherwise, there's no force. And also, I have a problem with your experiment. You're dropping experiments. Beginning. Okay, what's the problem with the experiment? Then I'll try and answer everyone together. Okay, you said it would take a couple of seconds for something to separate on the counter, correct? Is that what you said a second ago? More or, le more or less, right? Okay, how high, are you dropping, how high are you dropping that? And also, are you observing it as in free fall, watching it? watching it separate or are you just kind of letting it pass by your eye that your eye can't re resolve what's happening inside the flask or whatever you're using great questions it, it's, it's all bunchy so you so you can do it yourself right so you can do it yourself and i agree it's tough to watch but the best sort of so the experiment has been done uh, for real in those parabolic flights you know the, when they when they drop an airplane and you're in free fall temporarily there's um so people have done that so what you do is you shake you shake your mixture of oil and water, or whatever it is, and whilst it's in free fall, and so the, obviously the camera is there, focused straight on the thing, you can see it doesn't separate, and as soon as free fall stops, um, then you do separate it out. So effectively, you can hold it as long in its mixed state until until free fall ends. I covered this already. You, you, you have to formulate that into a logical fallacy in order to get gravity. Give it. Explain how that proves gravity give it a synological syllogism please scientist so 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 so, so I'll, I'll, uh, uh, I'll try and if i make a logical fallacy please please stop me i'm sure I, you will yeah um, i'll stop you now then i already know this has to be formulated into a logical fallacy so do you want me to stop you now or will you now attempt to actually formulate it into a logical fallacy knowing full well that it's a logical fallacy no, no, I'll try, I'll try and formulate it logically and hope I don't make a logical fallacy. But I'll give it a go. Give me, give me, a, give me about a minute or two to try and put it together in my head so I don't commit logical fallacy. Okay, you guys talk amongst yourselves. Sorry, why? This, I've asked for scientific evidence and you need to go away to figure out whether or not what you're presenting is or is not fallacious. You're kidding me. Are you really asking to go away and figure out whether or not what you're about to present is fallacious or not? Are you having a fucking yeah. laugh? You're a scientist, right? Yeah. You're a scientist presenting this as true, and now you need five minutes to figure out with your time and our time whether or not what you will present going forward is fallacious or not. No, no, it's just, it's just how, it's how things are presented um, can come across as you, you can misrepresent, as you well know, uh, uh, evidence a, as a logical fallacy or not, depending on, on, on whether you're, on, on how you discuss it, because obviously you don't I want see. to prove you want I to see. Disprove. Pr prove, you say, prove, yeah. There's a way of getting around that, a method. Do you know what that method is? Something empirical that we can use to get around this potential for fallacy? 
Do you know what that method is? It, it rhymes with scientific. If gravity doesn't exist... Sorry. If gravity doesn't exist... So... Yeah. Let <laughs> me get this straight. You're starting off with an argument from ignorance fallacy. No, that's not an argument from ignorance fallacy. Do you know what an argument from ignorance fallacy is? Okay, fine. In the, in the absence of gravity... So you're now trying to disprove non-existence. So absolutely an argument from ignorance fallacy. I'll ask again. Do you know what an argument from ignorance fallacy is? And don't just say yes explain it to us all i i thought i thought an an, an 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 ignorance fallacy was when you say you don't know something and you you is that not is that not the case I, I'm, I'm not very now good at, uh, now now say again your first statement for us please in the absence of gravity in the absence you say yeah hmm how is that an, a, a fallacy from ignorance so it's if non-existence yeah. How are you going to prove non-existence? I tell you what, you right now disprove. Yeah, I mean, ah, shut, I, up. I, I, shut up! I think you're right. Shut up! Shut right. up! Shut up! Right now, you disprove unicorns. Now, go. No, you're, you're, you're right. It is, it is a logical fallacy. Uh, so, right. what kind of logical fallacy would it be that you fell victim of, scientist? Would it be? Sorry? Uh, would it be, perchance? By any chance, the argument from ignorance fallacy. Um, I'll give you a clue. I, the answer is absolutely yes, Nathan. I have just used fallacious reasoning. And you spotted it straight away. Thank you for pointing out the error in my fallacious reasoning. Thank you, Nathan. That's what you could say. Okay, let me try again. But again, like I said, it takes me a minute to formulate it. Why? And, and Haven't you got this pegged? Haven't you got this science for gravity pegged already? Jesus Christ. Man, this... If I was a globe right now, I'd be despairing. I'd be going, yeah. no way, man. This scientist hasn't got this pegged. He's got to go away and have a think about it as an individual. Really? Why is it the case that you can't prove your claim? Can't, can't prove which claim? Gravity exists. So, 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 so this is always the problem. This is the problem with, with logical fallacies is you can never prove something... Um, you can only you can only disprove. Dude, the the Should problem is not case. logical fallacies. The problem is you guys what, have no actual what, what, proof of gravity. What logical That's fallacy is that? You can't actually prove something. You can only disprove. That, so that's our point. So if you say that this is this is Nathan's favorite, you go, no, no, no. You said that it was a lot. That was the problem with logical fallacy. If you say that you can only you can't prove, you can only disprove. What logical fallacy is it that states that you can't prove anything? Uh, was it confirming the con uh, affirming the consequent? I think. No, that's not that's not correct. Which is that one? I thought I thought affirming the, affirming the, affirming the consequent. Um, affirming the consequent is where you see a result that you think that you might get and attribute it to something that you haven't proved the cause of. So, for example, a cockerel crowing in the morning causes the sunrise. Every morning, the cockerel will crow, and the sunrise follows soon after. Therefore, you think that the sunrise is caused by the crow until the crow dies and then the sun rises still and then you thought shit the the consequent was the sun was coming up but it turned out not to be the cause because the cockerel's dead oh what a day what a lovely day Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this channel, or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to keep up to date with the community Flat Earth Debate, then go to nathanoakley.com and join the Flat Earth Debate 
forum. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below this video. Most importantly though, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Zinder, The Plain Truth, Sleeping Warrior, Science Guy, Paul, Mark, Flatten Earth, Eric, and Chocolate Saiyan. Good to have you all. Yo. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. 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 What? Good morning. Good morning. Right, let's see how well this goes. Any signs okay, of okay. curvature? Oh, no. do we do my housekeeping again, sorry. Any signs of curvature? We're doing something called housekeeping. Unfortunately, if there's a baller on the panel, he usually gets asked these questions directly because we all know the answers to them, but the ballers tend to not believe us. So when we ask these questions, we're going to aim them at you, not because it's you, just because of your position in this discussion. So no is problem. there any signs of curvature? That would be you, science guy. Oh, so, oh, so I'm expecting to do to, to response. Um, I, 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 I've no idea. Like I said, I'd really like to talk just about about about, about gravity. So the other we one... have housekeeping first, sir. This is your yeah. religion that we're challenging. So, is there any evidence of curvature, please? If there's no not, idea. just say no. No, no evidence at all. No idea. Right, Nathan. I mean, isn't that an issue for you, considering you live on a ball in your mind? No, he said no, Nathan. I'm all right with that. Let him just say no. Fine. Because we'll get to the gravity question as well. Yeah, okay. exactly. Then we can have the discussion. Okay. Any signs of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? Anybody at all? A whole panel, all of you. Science guy, this is him that you know. Again, um, not, not that I'm aware of. So, good. Excellent. Again, so you're a scientist here to defend the ball religion. And you have no, nothing to offer in terms of evidence of Earth curve and evidence that we rotate. You've got nothing no. for either of those two things. No. Wow. W why do you think you live on a ball exactly? Oh, because um, you see pictures from space. Sorry, space is a second law of thermodynamics <laughs> violation. You can't have gas pressure next to a vacuum. Oh, and if that also would be evidence of curvature too, though. By the way, that would be so. So, of, if you want, if you want, we can talk about this as well. So, I'm happy to talk about the issues that you guys have um, with. Well, can we not? Can we not prove points rather than talk about points? Because we're just trying to establish what scientific evidence there is to support particular assertions. Like, Let's not for talk example, about it. Let's just prove it. Any evidence that you can have a gas pressure without a container, for example? Don't be silly, Nathan. Can't have gas pressure without a container. Do you think you can have gas pressure without a container, science guy? Yes, you can. Oh, really? How, How can do you, you have demonstrate gas pressure that? without a container? Yes. Absolutely. But how, how are you going to do that then? So, again, again an excellent example is um, wind is localized increased pressure. Yeah, and that's, that's an, um, the effect. What's the cause of the wind? Presumably, sorry, 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 sorry. That sorry that that's not, that's not, a, that's not a demonstration of... Sorry, no, that's not right. gas pressure without a container. Mm hmm Yeah, so that's what we're asking for, gas pressure without a container. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so, do right. you, so can you... Demo you've, you've already said that you've got pictures from space. I said it's a second law of thermodynamics violation. Then Anthony explained that we do housekeeping. Then I asked one of the housekeeping questions. <laughs> Is there any demonstration of gas pressure being maintained without a container? So, do you have a demonstration of gas pressure being maintained without a container? Um, 
Do I have something that I can show you guys? Well, the, the, the atmosphere is, is the obvious one. That's a fundy belief, isn't it? So you're now going to no, no, assert no, no, your fundy it's... belief about what the atmosphere does? So it's... Can we, so I'm happy to talk about, I'm very happy to talk about, talk about thermodynamics, if you, if you guys want. Um, yeah, specific, Yeah. okay, cool. Can you tell us an answer to a question, specifically this question? Is it okay. possible to maintain gas pressure without a container? Yes. Not just yes. Remember the scientific method here is in play. So, so, so this is where I'll, this. If you want, I'll, I can explain this to you guys. But it, it is so. The issue is that when you guys talk about the second law of thermodynamics, is is you're forgetting a very important part of this discussion. So, second law of thermodynamics, yeah, it's, it's all real. Um, the issue is when you guys talk about the motion of atoms and molecules, and you guys often you you you, you forget a very important bit, which is the enthalpy. Talking about chemical differences and, and chemical events, you should be talking about Gibbs free energy. But Gibbs is not particularly applicable here, right? But basically, one of the most important equations in chemistry is to sort of directs where the atoms and molecules do stuff, right? So it's the direction of spontaneous change is Gibbs free energy. And Gibbs free energy is delta G, right? It's equal to delta H minus T delta L, T, T delta S. Entropy is included, but the point of Gibbs free energy is if you have got an enthalpic contribution, right? If you've got energy from somewhere, then you can overcome entropy. So the, the, so you can have what may look like apparent violations of the second law, but it's not. The whole point is you can locally decrease entropy, no problem. The, the most easy, easy example is that you can freeze water. Humans, we're extremely far from equilibrium. So when you guys just talk about thermodynamics, you're forgetting enthalpy, and that's, that's key, and that's, and that's the problem. Okay, so that's what I hold on entropy. entropy is. So Okay. Does that demonstrate no gas pressure without a container? Yeah. So, 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 for instance, so, 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 if I breathe in, yeah, if I breathe in, so open my mouth and, and, and breathe in, I'm applying energy. I'm creating local reduced pressure relative to the air outside. Yeah, that doesn't demonstrate gas pressure without a container. Hello, anon. So, oh, hold on one second. Hello, anon. Can I ask a question? Else? Hold on. Hey, Hello. good pleasure. Good to have so, you. So, so similarly, so similarly, if I breathe out, right? I temporarily have increased pressure in my lungs relative to the outside. So what happens, and this is where we're going to get to the interesting bit, what happens, of course, all the air rushes out. And so it's a temporary thing, right? So the air does move out. Okay, yeah? so you're, you're applying a force that. to the air. I understand that. So how do we have gas pressure right. without a container? So, so the whole point, so you're totally right. So basically, so if all you had, right, and this is going to come back to the same gravity argument, right? It's all, if all you had... Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So there's cool. quite a lot of background noise. Can everyone go on mute? So, so, sorry. So, sorry, guys. I have to, I have to take a call. One second. Sorry. Bye. Hello? Yeah, speaking. I've muted him for his own. Oh, I've damn muted him for his own uh, benefits. Right. I'd um, like to know. Is, is your lungs, are your lungs a container or not? I was wondering about that question. That's what I was yes, yes, they are. Would your lungs well, I was, was going to ask him the same shit. <laughs> yeah, yes, they are. Yes. Also, there's work being done. What's up, everybody? The chat's frozen. Damn you, chat. Nothing to see here. It's Thank not happening. It's not happening. Mine, mine is still going. No, I mean it, it's going in the live stream. I just haven't got it up on the the, the picture that's being presented to the audience. If anybody's super chatted, I'm really sorry if I didn't shout you out. I'm going to go and have a look now to see if anybody has. Bear with me a second. No, nobody has. I think we need to ask him if uh, if the atmospheric system that we live in is it an open or closed system? Start that question out. Oh no, please don't. <laughs> Why you don't like that question in there? Well, because <laughs> last time there was a discussion like two and a half hour about the stupid definition. So Why? Because Kosho doesn't understand the difference? No no no. It doesn't it, No, no, it because the actual matter. definition leaves them with a problem. The problem is that if they say it's a closed system, how the hell are they getting to the moon? 
And if they say it's an open system, how the hell is the gas staying here? So they've got a bit of a problem either way. Well, uh, human body is an open system, isn't it? Who gives a crap? Well, Talk, so how talking is about the your fundamentalist belief, my body. Yeah, Zinder, Zinder, we're talking about a fundamentalist belief about what Earth is, and you've got a problem because if you claim it's a closed system, then how the hell are you getting to the Moon or Mars or putting satellites out into outer space? However, if you say it's an open system, then the gas would fill the space. So, Why? basically, this is a problem for globe heads because you're screwed both ways. Why would it? I mean, I'll say my, it again. No worries. My body is that an open system. Yeah, we're not talking about your body, you stupid dick. I'll say it again because Z Zinder just wants to talk about a straw man. Yeah, we're not talking about the body. We're talking about your fundamentalist zealot belief that Earth is... A ball with gas on the outside in a vacuum, and a currently, apparently, at the moment, that's classed as an open system. In which case, you have the second law of thermodynamics that would dictate that the gas would fill the space. You also have this new faction like Kosho that wants to claim it's a closed system, in which case matter's not escaping. Well, rockets count as matter, satellites count as matter, so you're fucked either way. So what makes you think that the second law of thermodynamics would make the gas rush into outer space? Because that's what it is. That's what the second law of thermodynamics is. High pressure so, systems to low pressure systems. Yeah, high energy to low energy. Well, gas with pressure is definitely high energy. And a 10 to the minus 17 Tor vacuum is definitely low energy. And the gas would fill the space. That's why it's a problem, Zinder. I thought you oh. got this at a fundamental level. Obviously not. Slow. Oh, sure. So... Sorry, guys, I was on a call. Sorry. So, so the I, pressure I, gradient kind of disagrees with no, the it second doesn't. law of the No, it doesn't. Ha, no, it pressure does. gradient doesn't agree. So we've had these conversations the... loads of times, Inda. How do you have a gas pressure gradient without a container? Because that basically craps all over your straw man. Well, it's the... The second law. Yeah, the second law doesn't change the fact that the necessary antecedent to have pressure doesn't change if you insert this word gradient. Yeah, the antecedent is still required. It still needs something to pressure press upon. It's still pressure. We talked completely over each other because uh, when once I started to talk, you interrupted me. Yeah, because the gas pressure gradient still has the word pressure in there. So it still needs the necessary antecedent of something to bloody press upon, even though you're saying it's gradiated. That's no problem. There's plenty of demonstrations of gas pressure gradients in a container. They still require the antecedent of a container, Zinder. So this is a straw man. It doesn't address the point. Of the same gas? Of the same gas? Um constellation like you know what? when you go up in the air you probably have the same amount of oxygen of hydrogen of carbon and of nitrogen so we are going to go on this straw man you're not going to acknowledge what i've just said you're not going to you're not going to acknowledge that the necessary antecedent for a gas pressure gradient is still going to be a container for the gas to press and be pressure it's got to have a container sorry zinder it doesn't matter if it's gradiated or not if it didn't have a container the gas would fill the space by way of entropy. So uh, this is no, you I mentioned this. Oh, sorry, it's invalid. Yeah, go on. Sorry. You, you oh. guys are forgetting something. So second law thermodynamics is important. But you have to consider the enthalpy contribution as well. You have to be talking about even Gibbs is not fully applicable here, but Gibbs Gibbs free energy is more relevant here. You can't just talk about entropy. You have to talk about other factors, right? Why not? Uh, because why, why not? What's wrong with saying the gas would fill the the available space that becomes available to it? What's wrong with that statement? Because that's only part of the argument. So and the, the example is, right, so he, he, here's the example, right? So if I've got a container that's open, right, yeah, and I put a gas in it, yeah, and I put a vacuum outside it, great, all the gas is going to go out. Totally like you guys say, right, in, in agreement. If I take, so let's, let's just take, um, let's say we've got nitrogen in this container, right, and I freeze it to about minus... 300 degrees why Celsius. why would we do that is that what we have is that what i'm breathing am i f breathing frigging frozen nitrogen or am no, i just breathing am i just breathing the... gas that's not frozen my... is it in a gaseous it state or a frozen state yeah. when you freeze it listen to me i'm asking is it frozen now no but there is a temperature and so, but temperature is not the only one you have to take into account 
other forces of attraction. If there was no gravity, I fully agree, the atmosphere would slowly bleed away. But so, is, hold on. So, yeah. have you validated scientifically that we do have gravity or not? Because well, so to my fact, memory, one, to my one, memory, one, before you talk all over me, to my memory, you've not given us scientific evidence for gravity, just your fundy beliefs about it. So what you're saying is, if I have gravity, something that I have not given any scientific validity to, then I can have gas pressure without a container. Okay, what I'm going to do as a special treat for you, because you need concessions, you're a scientist, right? I'm going to give it you and say, no worries. Demonstrate gas pressure being maintained without a container by means of gravity. Off you go. The atmosphere. Sorry, not your fundy belief about what the world does. I want a demonstration of this force that I'm now saying, fine, I'll give it you. I'll give you that force of gravity, sunshine. That's on me, that is. You need that concession, don't you? Even though we argued about it for an hour and you, the scientist, didn't provide any scientific validity to it, I'm saying now, no worries, you can have that on me. Now give so me let's... gas pressure being maintained without a container by way of gravity. Show me that. Not your fundy belief about what the world does. So, can we go back to talking about gravity? No. I'm saying I've given it you. You've got it. There you go. On me. Did you not just listen to what I just said to you? Yeah, so no, so the answer is me So you got it. You got it then. Yeah, I, me, me personally, right now, I can't demonstrate it. Of course I can't. Has it been demonstrated ever? Yes. That you can condense, that you can condense gas. Okay. Can you show us that? No, I can't show you. But I've seen it, for instance. I've seen it. So did you say you can condense <laughs> gas? Yeah. So it's, it's condensed. <laughs> So you've, you've done something to it. It's not just regular gas pressure like we all know and love and experience here then. So you're going to do something okay. to it that's to change its state to make your argument work. Yeah. I'm going to lower the pressure slightly, yeah. Why? We just have okay. gas pressure here. It's just normal, regular, atmospheric gas pressure. We're all breathing it right now. And given that, even with the concession of gravity, you cannot demonstrate gas pressure being maintained without a container. I'm going to assert that space is fake. You can't have it. It defies the second law of thermodynamics. And given you've given no rebuttal to that, and in fact conceded that you cannot demonstrate it, I'm going to say, well, therefore it's just a fundy belief. Space is fake. So, firstly, I'm very happy for, for to accept that, that everything I think is a belief. I have no problem with that, okay? So, so, I'm, I'm, so again, my point is I wasn't here to try and prove things to you guys. Like, that, 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 I, I don't care about that. I'm more interested in figuring out how you guys think it all works. Um, but in terms of the argument of can you have gas pressure without, without a container, so you can demonstrate it. In fact, it happens all the time. But the problem is the difference in pressures that you'd observe. Where? Where does it happen all the time? Stop. Don't okay. just declare it. It happens sure. all the time. You're a fucking do, scientist. You, Shut you up! Shut up! You're a scientist. Now, you've just asserted, as a scientist that this happens all the time. Gas pressure without a container mm -hmm. specifically. Yeah. So if it happens all the time, show it us right now. Okay. Get an empty cup and blow hard into it and you temporarily have an increased pressure in there relative to the atmosphere. Sorry, is a cup a container? Well, it's an open container. Sorry, was that a yes? Well, so actually no. It's... A cup's not a container. Are you a it's not, retard? Excuse it's me, not. don't talk. Are you a retard? No. So a cup is not a container? A cup is not a sealed container. Sorry. You've just added this word to get around your stupidity. So I'll ask one more time for the scientist. Is a cup a container? Yes. Oh, right. So your stupidity has led you to not answer my question of can you have gas pressure without a container?
Okay, so you don't even need a cup of It's not okay, it? science boy. Mm -hmm. I'll ask again. Can you demonstrate gas pressure being maintained by way of gravity without a container? So, yes, again, the atmosphere. The Sorry, atmosphere that's your fundy belief about what the world does. The reason we are asking for this demonstration is because your fundy belief is that the Earth has a second law of thermodynamics violation, i.e. gas pressure next to a vacuum. Now, I don't want to hear for a third time about your fundamentalist belief in this. I want you to put your little scientist hat on and demonstrate gas pressure without a container. So, so, so I, I, I can't, I can't demonstrate gas pressure personally sort of, uh, uh, over the internet. But what I was going to say is that you're totally right. Yeah? Sorry, so if, I didn't ask you to stutter and say you can't demonstrate gas pressure. Okay, fine. If you, yeah, yeah, if, no, you, you well, don't seem to be comprehending what I'm saying because you stuttered and said I'm not going to demonstrate gas pressure over the internet. That's not what I asked for. So, are you having trouble comprehending what I'm asking for because you didn't repeat it back correctly? What, what did you want me to... Yeah, sorry, I'm having trouble comprehending. Yes, I can tell. Can you, the person claiming to be a scientist who has a fundamentalist religious belief in Earth being a sphere with gas attached in a vacuum demonstrate that we can actually have that second law of thermodynamics violation by showing a gas pressure being maintained by way of this fictional force of gravity without a container. Did I say it slow enough? Okay, so 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 a nice example is the fact that at the top of Everest or wherever it is, the atmosphere is about a tenth. So between here and Everest, there's a factor of tenfold of pressure differential with no container. Sorry, so you're saying there's pressure? I'm saying there's pressure. Okay, and that the necessary antecedent we would all agree that it, for pressure is something to press upon, correct? a pretty simple question i just need you to say yes because we all agree that the necessary antecedent for pressure is something to press upon do we not chemist sure um, we okay yeah. no we do agree excellent so in your fundamentalist religious belief about what earth is at the top of this gradient mm -hmm. what's the very top pressure pressing on so at the very top, at the very, very top, and this is where it gets interesting, exactly, is that it's basically um, what is being pressed on, it's not being pressed on, but it's being held down by gravity. Uh, sorry, we've had no scientific validity to gravity, have we? And I've asked for a demonstration of gas pressure being maintained by way of gravity, and you've made it very clear that you cannot demonstrate that. So what you're now going to do is, again, use your fundamentalist religious belief to assert what you believe about the Earth is in fact true. So you're a fucking zealot, not a scientist. Do you I'd say you're a zealot? Do you agree? Fine, I'm happy to accept all these, all these, all these criticisms. Do you guys agree that between ground level and the top of the hit of the Himalayas, that is demonstrating pressure differential? So what was that word? Sorry, pressure. Did you say pressure differential? So yeah. we've gone through this thirty seconds ago, and we both agreed that the necessary antecedent would be something to press upon, didn't we? We both agreed that. Just say yes. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I, then I asked you what it's pressing on on the top and you didn't pressing tell us it's, it's pressing not pressing gravity. on gravity now is it at the top mm -hmm. at the top sunshine yeah what's it pressing on up there is it by chance a 10 to the minus 17 tor vacuum because it can't press on that it would disperse into it it's pressing against gravity sorry there's no scientific validity to gravity and even if i gave it you you wouldn't be able to demonstrate that that's true now, would you? Again, this was now 20 seconds instead of a minute that we got you to circle jerk us again. So I'll ask the question again. It's getting quicker and quicker and quicker. Let's see if we can get this pace up. See how quickly we can get this Muppet in circles. 
So what's it so pressing is, on? What's it so pressing on? on? What's it pressing on at the top of your religious belief of Earth in space? So this is my. This is why I wanted to 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 ignore all of this long preamble and go straight back to talking about gravity. This is exactly the, so. So we all know this, how this conversation goes because you do it every single day on the show. We want. To, I want to go back to talking about gravity. Okay, give us your That's scientific what, evidence for gravity. So what I wanted to do is go back to the example of what happens when we drop no a mixture no oils. no this is very it's no it's no it really is. we've already done it and i've said no we have we're not it. no we never stop talking it. no i know you don't like the word no but it's tough luck we've gone through this and i've already got this going around in a circle five times on the last show haven't i so relative density is agreed upon on both sides and doesn't change in either instance of our discussion. However, you've got a fundy extra bit where you arbitrarily assign down and then give it a force that you've got no scientific validity for. So to get around that, we need something empirical. And what we have on offer to give us empirical proof of this is a method that you're supposed to be disciplined in. That would be science. So I'll ask again. Give me your scientific evidence of gravity. Okay, you're going to shout at me, but here it goes anyway. If you drop a bottle containing a mixture of oil and water off a building and it doesn't separate... We're really going to go back to the same point, yeah. bro. Is he, is he, let, him, let him formulate the logical fallacy because he's going to do it for me. He's going to put the full formal logical fallacy together right now. Come on. No, that's what I said. So, so if, if I drop a bottle which is mixed with oil and water off a building and it doesn't separate whilst it's falling. No, sorry. And it does separate whilst it's falling, then gravity doesn't exist. Can we say it one more time? The, why, um, why is that not an affirming the consequent form of logical fallacy? Because it's not affirming the consequence because... It yes, it is. If P, then Q, Q, therefore P. If I drop a bottle off a building, I will observe a certain effect happening or not happening. I do observe this effect happening or not happening, therefore gravity is real. So this is absolutely unequivocally the logical fallacy known as affirming the consequent if p then q q therefore p the problem no, with this, i haven't no, finished i have not finished right the problem with this logical fallacy is that one thing does not necessarily follow the other so you assert that if you drop this bottle you will observe an effect and if you observe this effect then gravity is real you then throw the bottle off, observe the effect, and declare that you've proven gravity. Now, the first problem is that it is, as both me and Anthony have pointed out, and affirming the consequent formal logical fallacy, if P then Q, Q therefore P. It's also, also and I still haven't finished. Also, it's not scientific evidence. It's not a formulated hypothesis. It's not backed by systematic experimentation. It's not establishing a cause and effect. We went through all of this on the last show, asshole. So, so firstly, I, I, so I acknowledge didn't what I've just you, said. You, We've just gone through it again, and I want you to acknowledge it. Oh, I don't want to circle jerk forever. Acknowledge that we not only have just gone through it now, it is a formal logical fallacy, it is not scientific evidence, and we went through all of this on the last show. Please acknowledge what I've just said. Oh, I definitely acknowledge we went through it on the last show, for sure, but it's because I'd really like to talk about the mechanism. I'd really, I'd really like to dispense with all sorts of the arguments about what isn't isn't scientific. Can we just talk about it, or is that not possible? No, oh yeah, let's have a little heart to heart about our fundy beliefs in gravity. Let's have a little talk about it, scientist. Yeah, let's sit round a table and discuss it together. No, you're a scientist. Give me science. So this, so this is my experiment, right? This is one. Is you go. Something which is half oil, half water, and see what Excellent. happens. Excellent. This is this is a, this is an experiment. This is a hypothesis test. No, so again, like I said, you don't uh, uh, really uh, need uh, a uh, 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 uh. Is that a yes? This is an experiment, a hypothesis test. It's an experiment, not a hypothesis test. That's what an experiment is. You're definitely not a scientist. 
I'll give you an example if you want. No, you don't, an because I now think you're a fraud. Because I for you to fraud. declare okay. that... A, so, shut up. So this, this, shut, so I'm going to kick you out if you keep talking over sorry, me. Go on. Sorry. If you declare, quite boldly so, that an experiment is not a hypothesis, I'm going to claim you're a fraud. You're not a scientist. I agree. So, I, I agree. I think you're a fraud. I'm very happy if you guys think I'm a fraud. I actually don't care. But but so no, I can... no. Now we're going to, now we're going to oh, grill right. you on how... Because you either... Either there's one of two situations here. Either yeah. you're not a fraud, and in which case, whoever has put you through education needs to be stripped also. You definitely need to be stripped of any accreditation you have. But whoever's taught you also needs to be stripped. That's the first problem. If, on the other hand, you are just a fraud, we want to expose you as such. We no longer want any discussion on this matter the only discussion we want with you science guy is how valid your claim of being a scientist is so now let's back that claim of, of, of how i'm a real scientist well i'm not going to reveal my 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 identity on the internet well you don't need to reveal your identity but it would help if you were able to demonstrate competence with the scientific method given that you're a scientist yeah. Why don't we just discuss the scientific method and see where he fails, Nathan? By explaining to you guys that the scientific method is not something which is relevant to science. Give us the scientific Shut method. Shut dickhead. Give it, give it us. What the hell are you talking about? It's not a scientist. He's a liar. He's it's a not a scientist. He's You're a fraud. fraud. Okay, can I give you guys an example? Of no. When... We've, I, didn't you listen a moment ago when I said I don't want any more examples from you because okay. we think you're a fraud based on the fact okay. that you declared quite boldly that an experiment is not a hypothesis test. Now, that, that, is, that alone test. tells me you're a fraud. Oh my goodness. It's not always a hypothesis. Sometimes it's... Okay, sometimes so where's the exception then? What's the authority for the exception? Citation, I'll give you an please. example. Yeah, am I allowed to give the example, Nathan? Citation. What, a citation for what? A citation it's not. for an example where an experiment is not a hypothesis test. Citation, well, I can give you please. citation if you want. Absolutely. So, uh, 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 Nature Physics 2006. Let me just find it. This sounds like someone that we're familiar with. Is this Jimmy? No, it's definitely, it's definitely not Jimmy at all. Anybody disagree with me? This sounds a lot like Jimmy. I don't, that's not relevant. Really Jimmy, genuinely. So, let me just find the full citation. Please. Tell us I what the scientific you, method is. I can show you the Skype conversation where I this was Jimmy like over an hour ago with Mark Doxy. I said, this sounds like Jimmy to me. Yeah, it does sound like Jimmy. I'm happy to, if, if you want, if you, if, I'm happy to email one of you guys some proof if you guys actually want, by the way, genuinely. Um, but I don't want to say it over the internet, obviously. Okay, so, no really, worries. Nathan Oakley, 1980, at AOL.com. Oh, one, second. one second, let me write it down. No worries. Nathan what? Nathan Oakley. N A T H A N O A K L E Y. Yeah. One nine eight zero. Yeah. At A O L dot C O M. And what kind of evidence would you like me to send you? So what, Travis thinks whatever this is you like. the um, thing as well then. Whatever you like. But even if it's just. Yeah, I will okay, not I'll reveal your personal information. It will not get displayed on screen. I will open it on okay. my iPad on a separate machine. It will not get displayed to the public and I will not disclose it. Okay. Do you want me to do it after the show then? Or No, I want you to send it me now so I can check it while the show's running to see if you are or not a fraud. I suspect you are. Well, let's see based on what you send me. No, so in all honesty, so I'm happy to I have to think about what, because I, do, I don't want you knowing my, 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 my full name. So I'll think of a way of doing it if you want. But you can, you can rest until I'll send you something um, that would, would hopefully prove that. Is that good enough? Nathan, yeah. do you think this is Jimmy, or do you not? Are you not sure? I don't care. I know he's a fraud. I know he's definitely not a scientist. To I declare agree he's a fraud. That, to declare an experiment, I don't think it's Jimmy. and that, well, that's as maybe. To declare an experiment's not a hypothesis test tells me instantaneously he's a fraud. So, so all I'm saying is it's not always. I'm not saying sometimes, sometimes, but the example is yeah, citation needed. Please. Citation okay, needed. So. Citation, please. Citation. Nature Physics. David Goodstein. 2007, volume 3, page 509. Provide a link, please. How do I do that? Copy and paste. And then, and then how do I send that to you, if you see what I mean? Are you on a computer or chat? a phone? No, I'm not on the side chat because I can't log in because I haven't got a YouTube account. So we're chatting just directly no, on no, the... Are you on, a, are you on a computer? Yeah. You are? It's in just the wait. Hangout. 
Yeah, oh, just right wave, can do it there. There just wave your mouse over the Hangouts page. Yeah. And on the left-hand side, there'll be a, a few boxes appear. The top one is the chat box. Just enter. Okay, yeah, I've got it up. Did you grab that too, Anthony? Uh, pardon? What? Just if you guys can't open it, chat. let me know, because I'm asking the PDF, because you guys might not have institutional access to... to Sorry, this channel. doesn't seem to have anything on it. What do you mean? Yeah, it doesn't show anything on my end either. I'm looking at it. There's nothing on anything. this. There's no, there's no citation here. You need a subscription or something for it. Yeah, okay, fine. So if you want, you guys know how to use Sci-Hub? Sorry, sorry, you sent me a link. I looked at it. There's no citation on there. So I don't know what you're reading from, but I'm certainly not seeing the same thing that you're going to about to read from. You guys haven't got, uh, you haven't got subscriptions to all the, all the academic journals. You're mumbling. But I can't hear you. You guys haven't got um, access to the scientific journals. I would have hoped that this article would have been open access. But do you guys know how to use Sci-Hub? Obviously Sorry. not, given that it sounds like it's an academic institutional thing. Shut up, Mickey. Idiot. Come okay, on. if you want, this is, like, this is, this is actually, this, this, this website is very useful because this lets you get any academic paper, Sci-Hub, without having to pay for it. So you guys will actually probably enjoy it. So let me see if I can just get the DOI oh, on this one. Thank you very much. Did you grab that, Anthony? Uh, no, I'm busy playing uh, Command & Conquer because this guy's not really going anywhere. And I'm not prepared to come out of my game for the benefit of him at this point. If uh, somebody else could substitute, it would be great. The link I, I just sent love you how is... we the peasants have to pay for this knowledge that well, which, is, which is why which is why I'm sharing SciHub with you guys. So SciHub is is extremely powerful. Yeah, we're still waiting for a citation where an experiment is not a hypothesis test. Sorry? Yeah. No, so SciHub is just so you guys can get access to um th these journals. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh yeah, that's that Russian site, right? That was that's set fantastic. up by that lady. Yeah, and anyway, and then so what you want to do is you want to sign up and then you want to input that DOI in there. It's just not all about the scientific method. It's not about the scientific method, did you say? Oh, oh one second, sorry, it's just something my dog, one sec. What is the DOI? What's the number? <laughs> Sorry. Just just while he's away from the mic. I, I just, don't think this guy's Jimmy. I don't know if this is just because it's on the last one. Oh yes, definitely. I think I can establish that it's not Jimmy just by asking his ethnicity, which he may or may not want to disclose. But I think that will. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very good. Awesome. Yeah, I cut shit like that. I just love how Sci-Hub, uh, we, we pay for the research, but then you actually have to pay for the documents. They steal the money, they fund the research from taxpayers, and then you... Oh, sorry, guys, someone's coming to my office. So, um, um, can I ask you a personal question? You don't have to answer this. Sure. Uh, um, what's your ethnicity? Why, why, why is that important? I'll tell you why. Because I, I suspect that you are not the ethnicity of somebody else who's been on the panel that other people are accusing you of being. That's why I ask. So I don't, in all honesty, I'd rather really not rather give any personal information if that's okay. No, fair enough. Yeah, I know you're being very, very paranoid. Um, what about if I, asked you, if I asked you to confirm that you're not a certain ethnicity, would you be willing to do that? Yes, I think so. Are you white British? Yes, but not originally, if that helps. Yeah, it can't. You can't change your ethnicity. No, it's fine. In that case, Disney, no, I'm not British. Right, that's enough for me to tell you that it's not Jimmy. Okay. I, I'd I agree. Born, I, was born, I was born abroad. That, that, that I'm willing to say. Yeah, I can, I can, I, I'm pretty well travelled. I can, yeah, I don't want to disclose any information either, but yeah, okay, fine. Let's move on. It's not Jimmy. Okay, guys? Anyway, Happy? anyway the article I send you is just a discussion of the scientific method. I know we have this argument all the time, but anyway, have a Voice I have is fantastic. I actually have to go to get a train. Uh, I'll try and do it again tomorrow. Um, I'd really love to talk about that kind of stuff kind of openly without all the all the arguments because I think what you guys do is interesting and it's fun. Um, and you've been a very good sport. You've been an excellent guest. Although I've given you a hard time, you've been a very very good guest. So thank you very much. No, so you what, what I really want to do is I really want to understand fully how you guys. Think, think stuff work. I want you guys to fully understand how I think stuff work without. That's with... easy, mate. Relative density, we both agree on. You claim there's an extra force, and we don't say there is because you can't prove it. And that's basically it in a nutshell. If you don't understand it, I don't really get how I can explain it further for you. Do you understand? Yes, great. Can we move on? Evidence, please. 
because because this I'm saying is that that's 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 sort of step one. There's also step two is about how. So this what I'd like to talk about. I really haven't. I really have to go get my train. Is basically what happens at the microscopic and at the atomic level of when you drop something. This is why I'm interested. Okay, is. Dude, what's it going to prove? Is it going to prove there's a force there pulling it down? Maybe. <laughs> no. Might... I'd say right, it's okay. going to prove nothing because nobody can see the atomic level anyway. Well, and it's going, to be, uh, but it's going to be theoretical physics at best. And we don't want that. We want science. So, why, but like I said, again, read the article about scientific method, all sort of stuff we can discuss this later. I actually don't mind. But my, no, my whole point is... Why I think nobody drill him any further. It may, Thank you. It may show that there is, there is something missing in the density buoyancy argument. That's what, I, that's what I'm hoping. But anyway, I have really? to... Really? Thank I'm you very sorry, much. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I took up so much of your time, everyone. No, no. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure having you. You've been a really great sport. Thank you very much for joining. I really do appreciate no it. I log in again when I can, but I, didn't, I have, I have, a, I have a, a day job and I shouldn't have been pissing around for the last two hours. So, <laughs> sorry, guys. I appreciate <laughs> it. I'm very grateful. Hopefully, you'll join again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Surprised you've got gratitude for a fraud, Nathan, to be honest. Uh, because he's joined and he's further the discussion. He's demonstrated whether or not he's a scientist is yet to be determined. But if nothing else, he's demonstrated his complete incompetence in regards to science and the scientific oh, method. Finally. Blame scientists or otherwise. Hey, Arwin. God. Oh, man. Hi. <laughs> hey, I want to do a shout out to the Rumpus in chat. He's finally back. And hey, I'm right. attracted. <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it again. Shout out to the rumpus. Hey Riley, he just said he finally finished up the last two percent of that proof against your footage from last year. It only took him nine months to get that last two percent done. So apparently he has it now. Right. Well, I've got the rebuttal ready for that. So whenever you're ready, rumpus, you can come and present it, and I'll present my uh, rebuttal immediately. So I've been ready for this for a long time, and I'm really <laughs> looking forward to it. Me too. Oh, I'm how I missed his utter, 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 utters. It's all right. Sorry, I've got a correction immediately. Just read the rumpus's comment. No, I have not finished the last two percent. Oh my god! But he said he did. <laughs> An utter, 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 utter moron. How long does it take to bend a bit of light rumpus and demonstrate it in a computer screen? Oh God, he says he has to be done. <laughs> That's <laughs> priceless. He says, I hope to have it you done. You know they say, in the last two percent is the hardest. Uh, what's the excuse? Pound says he says he's had a cold. Have you yeah, had a cold? What's the excuse, <laughs> have you had a cold? Come on, for no if nothing else, Rumpus, play along and just say you've had a cold from the chat. It'll be funny. Come on, you must have a sense of humour. Must have. Uh, I don't know how else he could survive. Being him and all. <laughs> Got a few comments, lol. 2%. All he's going to do is simulate how to bend light exceptionally beyond the barriers that firm allows it to be bent because we don't have light that behaves like that in the atmosphere, but he has to simulate it. But I've already got the response ready for when he does it, and I've had it for a long time. So whenever you're ready, Rumpus, I'm ready and waiting for you. Hey, Chris. And... I've got an important question. Sorry. So if... If heliocentrism is a religion, are you guys being blasphemous right now? Uh, no, because it's not God, is it? So, so oh, I, I'm not allowed. That's a perspective, Riley. Really? I, I, so I'm you not allowed. Blas to... You can only blaspheme God. You can't blaspheme <laughs> the, any other religion. It's only God specifically. Well, um, you blaspheme my son. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Helios, you know? Yeah, that's so a big ball of fire. So, if you deny it, that's actually a huge yeah. ball of fire, many times larger than the earth. You're kind of are blaspheming. The sun created me, so um, I, can I shout blasphemy yeah. every time you insult my son? But then you may as well shout you? something like, if you're going to chant something like that, you may as well chant like some kind of religious chant, like Alu Akbar. They do a lot of that chanting kind of stuff. Nah. You may as well chant that. 
I, I don't I, I don't think this, the sun is great. The sun is perfect. So well, God is great. Think, God is like, righteousness over upon. the sun in some so, kind of biblical context. Yeah, so religious uh, context. So Al Wakbar doesn't work. The sun isn't great, it is perfect. Oh well, like, Helios Helios U Akbar. But yeah, uh, Helios U Akbar. <laughs> the sun is greater than Earth or something. Yeah, it's just greater, greater than, than us all. Than yours? Helios Akbar. Yeah, you can, Helios you can do that. U Akbar. Helios U Akbar. Yeah, there you go. That's it. That's the ticket. <laughs> hey, Hello. anybody watch Jaren last night? The three hours Jaren uh, quote, quoting uh, scientists and physicists from the past. It was amazing. If no, you I didn't it, see that. Which on Jarenism? For, on Jarenism live last, last night. He went for three hours, three hours, and I was able to listen to at least ninety percent of it. The rest I was, I couldn't, so I have to re re listen to it again. But he literally went for three hours reading quotes from different physicists and scientists from the past, from you know, from Maxwell to Einstein to Tesla to Poincaré, everybody, and regarding different things regarding um what the first section was like about um you know gravity and then it was about the multiverse and then it was ether it was and it was so perfectly concise and it just went on and on and on and on and on and I, it's it's amazing and i want that in a paper form so i'm gonna have to go and re-listen to it and then find every quote in google doc and then i'm gonna try to set up some sort of a a, a dump where I can put ev all of these quotes with their Google Books link, so it's not just, you know, hearsay. But it's amazing. Just I'll put I'll paste the link on the chat right now. Cool. I was listening to some of it. He starts really late in the UK for us. So it's like I think he starts at about two a.m. So by the time he finishes off, he's yeah. usually like three, four, five in the morning. That's why, that's why I wanted to bring it to your attention because it was absolutely fantastic. I, I agree. Yeah, the first I saw, one I saw it too. Was, Brilliant. Cinder again. Oh, by the way, guys, I have a special shout out to the world. And hashtag MIFA. Make Earth flat again. Hashtag MIFA. Spread Make the word. Earth what? Hashtag MIFA. Make Earth flat again. It's already flat. It's though. a play on that. <laughs> I know that's the that's part of the joke. Right, I know, right. I know. Yeah, it was, is, and always will be flat. Okay, the link is on the chat and the Google Hangout. <laughs> the octagon says, "Make Arwin stupid again." Sorry, <laughs> sorry, dude. That's gonna be difficult. This. So I've just spammed that link to Jaren's video. So if you want to go and check out that, the link is there for you to go and check it out. Yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta throw in on that. It, it was an awesome video, and uh, Jaren really killed that because it's, it's kind of nonsensical to think all these big name scientists and even the little name scientists just can have can can quote all these things that go against the very paradigm that we're taught is fact it's it just great. insane to me <laughs> it was so great like i the whole time i was listening i had a big smile on my face just in case anyone's listening to this and can't see what went into the chat it's called quotes in quotes what was it called that, that tell us we have all been lied to live so i'll just say that again quotes in quotes that tell us we have all been lied to and that's by Jaronism. yeah also shout out to uh the not a globe subreddit uh, i found it on there nathan i was watching in there some of red pill philosophy's comments um there are people that hadn't heard of you before that obviously are american and um, that were questioning whether or not you were a legit flat earther or not you want to just address a quick message to them, telling them that you are a legit flat earther. I think they, they think that you might be controlled opposition. Don't know who you are. 
Sorry, I didn't hear any of that. My kid was smiling on me. Say it again. It doesn't matter. The moment was gone. Who would think that? That's dumb. Only yeah, people that are no didn't know. I mean, one of my one of my pet peeves is, you know, all of this back and forth from I don't know who's you know Eric Dubé and Dell and Pete the shit you know all this inside you know oh they're CIA and they're controlled op I'm like well if they are they're doing a terrible job because they're telling the truth right they're sharing like why would you share flat earth if you're a, if you're a psyop that doesn't make any sense yeah that, that would make Nathan a horrible show <laughs> right well in the sense of uh, Eric Dubé he's trying to peddle creation so that would be where his energy actually lies so he would just hijack the flat earth idea to do that mm. cause Nathan is like the most Christian guy we know right <laughs> yeah well, it's I mean, a me a Mario. Okay. Do you know what? I, like, you I, like how people, I like how people are questioning whether I'm some kind of religious fundy just because I say there's more evidence for Noah's Ark than there is for gravity. It doesn't make me a fucking Christian or a fundy or a whatever just because We're I compare cutting. how little evidence you have against something with something biblical. I'm just right. pointing out the fact that your religion believes shit that's got more evidence against it, and there is an opposing religion or set of views or whatever you want to call it that actually does have a boat somewhere up in the mountains of Ararat that happens to match the size that the Bible tells you um, his ark was. So have a think about that for a bit, guys, because um, it's bad that there's more evidence for Noah's ark than there is for gravity. Right. It just makes you historically interested. Yeah. It's not religious. Ah just happens that that one book may have contained some actual historical truth and that's Correct. interesting yeah i don't think you're a fundy or anything like that sleeping warrior i think you just stand under quantum eraser so i oh, think that's God. where you come from fuck me man i know you keep saying that but i don't know why you think that yeah. i don't agree with john on all, they all most do. Everybody of what on he the says is, uh, everybody on the channel uses nathan's arguments and quantum erasers arguments i mean it's everybody does so. Well, because a lot of the things that he says is right, except he's using the flat earth truth to, he's hijacking the flat earth to peddle creation. <gasps> oh, God. Yeah. No. Yeah, I agree with that. No. Fundamentalism, Christianity, yeah. Because there's no indication whatsoever. Let's talk about low hanging fruit. Get into this. Whatever. Yeah, I just came here to smoke a bomb, guys. Chill out. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, with your friends on um, in Gem's Discord server, you know the friendly friend, You're yeah, my only We know, friend, we know you don't have any friends. Tim. I don't have any friends. Nobody guys. likes you. All I have money is my friend. Yeah, you know what you're actually doing. That you're unfortunately, sucking. this is my opportunity to say a farewell to all of you who have joined us in the Nathan Oakley live stream. A massive thank you to all of you for like, commenting, sharing and subscribing and smashing the super chat. Sorry if I missed anybody smashing the super chat while my chat was not working. Be sure to check out the forum, nathanoakley.com and join in with the community Flat Earth debate. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video. If you're watching on Nathan Oakley 1980, be sure to stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Observations in you, and I also talk mm -hmm. about... My dick's like bigger than yours, Woo. Can you prove gravity? Can you prove axial? No. Yeah, actually, to a and actually, there's two celestial points. Oh, wait, and you're wasting everyone's time. Oh, go ahead. I wasn't talking. Go ahead. You're a waste of time, Tim. You have nothing. Oh, and you're a you're you're not a waste of time, are you, Anthony? What have you done all these years? You Anthony? have problems with your uh, religious views, Tim. What you know you what? Riley has actually years, done. Anthony? Riley has actually created his own show where he does. In wow, fact, Globers so on cool. to have actual discussions with non Globers and actually wow, having impressive. a real platform that instead of just years. a jacking off platform where you constantly whine about everything, about, about everyone you kind of don't like, and then slander all the Why way through using stuff, music you that you it? didn't make that you ripped off from somebody else to try to look interesting. What did I shithead. rip off? What did I rip off? You're you're just 
taking other people's music I mean, and playing it on your channel. I mean, like a don't thief. Feed the troll. So what? Mm. Uh, if you didn't know, Arwen, Arwen uh, my channel isn't monetized, so anytime I play one song and then have like 1,700 views, all those views go towards the artist, right? Do you know that? Really? Do you link to them? You don't need to. All you need to do is you play one You don't need to. You just song. rip it and just yeah, make just it your own. Try to and be all interesting and try to oh, grab man. some sorry, attention. Sorry, you two. Owen, your shit Owen, fest. Owen, Owen, Owen. He is actually right, and he's just explaining how a copyright process works, but you don't want to listen to him for some reason. He's right. I don't mind. I don't care really for the yeah, copyright. Yeah, I'm the bad guy with you just guys. Just taking I mean, other you know, people's stuff. Stuff. stuff all day, but because I don't believe the flat earth, you guys hate me. No, we hate no, you because I you're a wanker. You. Can I just say, Tim's uh, banned me on all of my what? accounts from commenting in his live streams. What's that? Tim's banned you. You banned me from all of my accounts haven't you tim from commenting at all in your live streams yeah why did you say that i actually hit you up on discord with the uh with the screenshot of you saying that you you were literally in my live stream the day before i don't understand with nathan oakley 1980 i don't have your channels banned dude oh you have my, my main channel banned. banned actually on your main channel yeah they're all banned every one of my channels all right, well, you can test that again. I'll have to check because you were just on my live stream the other day. So. No, that weren't me. Maybe it was P Miles on his soccer account. Anyway, right? what do you, did you ever look up Modus Ponens? Because I did ask you about that, Nathan. Look at what? Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Modus Ponens? Uh, I do vaguely remember looking it up. Yeah, I'm sure I looked it up on the spot and responded to you straight away, didn't I? Uh no you didn't because it's kind of a it's kind of a thing it's it's kind of a modus like well, we have to have some uh, logical way of deduction or induction or something to figure out the shape of the earth thing so if you look up modus ponens and denying the consequent and the fallacy fallacy and and a couple other things everything that you said to Bob yesterday is is fallacious oh really so, <laughs> uh, yeah. oh right that's nice hand wave dismissal to all of my picking apart of Bob's bollocks. Okay. No, it wasn't a hand wave mis dismissal. I just gave you a bunch of things like modus ponens. Yeah. Um, I know. You don't have to repeat them, Tim. 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 If, Tim. If it actually, you're Tim. 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 You don't need to repeat them. I just need to ask a quick question. See, when I did it with Bob yesterday, or today for that matter, what I do is I explain the fallacy and how what they've said fits into that fallacious reasoning. So maybe you'd like to do the same for me. And give me an That's example. why you need to check out modus ponens. No, not tell me to go and check something out actually formulate what you claim I have formulated into a logical fallacy and explain how it's fallacious. You're denying the consequent, all right? We have a lot of ways to confirm R and you deny every single one of them. Because you have no, to. Denying, 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 denying the consequent. Denying the consequent. Yeah, look up modus ponens, guys. It's it's really, uh, it really just How do you tell us what it is, Tim? Well, if it, denying the consequent is what I would deduce it is probably like it's probably like yeah if there is some kind of suggestive element out there then that suggestion must be true it's basically declaring the aberration to be true because there are signs we have to have a way something there that's out, fascinating right? that's so scientific of you man well, when nathan it's really says actually I confirming it's it, it's are really you still talking arwin jesus christ man i am no i'm not jesus christ although yeah, I know. <laughs> so yeah, the consequent antecedent relationship, Tim, actually requires the thing to be self-evident in the first instance. So you can't just say I'm denying the consequent because I'm denying your presupposition. Yeah, don't work like that, mate. You're using presupposition wrong as well. I'm sorry, but you are. Yeah, are we, we had a definition from Bob yesterday. He said that a presupposition means you've got no evidence for it. Would you agree with Bob? He said a lot of wrong things, truthfully. Bob, yeah. Well, that's what he said. Are you disagreeing with him? But you guys, you you on the logic side, you need to actually look up modus ponens and denying the... Oh, uh, yeah, you've said this already. So you sound like a bit of a stuck record now. I'm getting a bit bored of you. Yeah, what I explained to you, Tim, was that if you're going to claim that I've used a logical fallacy, I would expect you to, A, give us an example of that logical fallacy being used by me and explain how it is actually a logical fallacy using that example. Yeah, that's, that's what I want you to do. Explain your claim. Yeah. I already did. Go look up. Oh, you already did. No, you didn't, asshole. You just say you just named a logical fallacy and then said I was guilty of it. You're guilty. 
Yeah. Bam! Yeah, there's the gavel. Yeah. YouTube it. Just Google it. You know, like he that is ringing in the argument is actually supposed to understand what he's talking about. Come on. That's unreasonable. Yeah, we just have to Google it. We like just have to look it up. He doesn't yes. need to understand the argument he's what, bringing What Tim has just done, no? uh, Arwin, is the argument ab ad absurdium. I'm not going to give any yeah. examples. Yeah. I'm just going to look at it. I'm just going to declare that's what he's done. Go and look nice. it up. That's my proof. Actually, Tim's Nathan, guilty of it. Nathan, Go look it up. Let me correct you, Nathan. You've got the wrong fallacy. It's the at this the it's the fallacy ad dicus that you've got. You sorry, you got it wrong there. I, I was just trying to make up anything random. It didn't necessarily have to associate anything with what Tim said. I just declared it and then said it was true based on me so telling him to no. look it up. It's an so ad. I. It's an ad bong fallacy. So no examples then, Tim. No demonstrations <laughs> of these fallacies being actually utilised, yeah, other than us denying your presupposition of R. <laughs> No, not her. Ah, the value you presuppose in every single example of a sphere. Even when you do it by proxy. I liked where you waved your mouse over Walter Bislin's calculator. Yeah? <laughs> so doing it yeah, by what proxy. Oh, yeah, you're oh, triggered, okay. eh, Tim? Triggered. Cool. <laughs> nice and triggered. Yeah, he's triggered, my darling. Very triggered. So even though you're doing it by proxy, Tim, you're still using that presupposition. You know it and I know it, but what you've come here today to do is say, we're denying the consequent because we don't accept there your you presupposition. <laughs> uh, we are presupposition deniers. <laughs> How dare we not presuppose? <laughs> yeah, quote from Tim had. Osman. We all have our axioms and presuppositions. Tim Osman, 2018. Oh, he's probably got me muted because that's what he does to his guests. No, no, you're not no I haven't got you yeah, muted. Yeah. I was quoting you. We all have our axioms and presuppositions. Tim Osman, 2018. Yeah, we do. You're an idiot. Why, why would you think? Yeah, that's, that's called an ad hominem attack. In fact, it's not even an ad hom. Yeah? It's a name-calling fallacy. Just useless. Oh, that's cute. Okay, let's just go over fallacies all day. Yeah, that's all you've got. That's all you've got. That's why we go over fallacies all day because it's all we ever get presented, Tim. You guys are dreadfully boring. I'm not going to actually bring any life to this chat later. Yeah, You're not going to bring no. any evidence either, are you, Tim? <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye, Timmy. Everybody wave to Tim. Bye, Pa. That was fun. I think he was trying to get me a community guideline strike by coming on and ripping a bong. Does that bring nah, a guideline strike? It doesn't. He, he does it all the time, like all the channels, own channel. I would doubt it. Maybe. That was good trolling, by the way, Zinder. Of oh, what? Alu, Alu Akbar. Or oh, Blas oh, yeah, I Blasphemy. Like it, yeah. I mean, it's perfect because it's it is obviously trolling us, but by the same token, it's so true. You know. <laughs> it's under an update on your challenge. Again. I, was, I was just going to say the in irony the being that, that that very argument has actually been used in the affirmative by Math Powerland. So he declares that if you are to criticise, he he actually stated this was a law. I've never checked this, so I'm going to state it anyway because it's come from Math Powerland. Whether or not it's true, I don't know. He said that you're not allowed to criticise the blue marble. It's somehow a law. I can't remember the exact details, but it's uh, it's deemed as blasphemy. Yeah. I, I, sometimes so, so I like to troll a little. Proof that it's actually a religion. I actually well, looked at the word blasphemy, and it does say anything that's sacred. So if you consider heliocentrism sacred, then if you speak against it, then you're blasphemy. And what is considered sacred? Science? No. Religion? Yeah. Well, it, it's really what anybody considers sacred. Like if you consider your kids sacred, then if you speak against your kids, you're blasphemy. Is my laptop? It's my laptop's sacred. Then, if you speak against it, then it's blasphemy. Interesting. Didn't know. Perfect. But um, no, I don't. I don't consider um, to be honest, the uh, heliocentric thing, whatever, is sacred. But uh, I, I like to um, bring it out just as a joke. I think every time we say Einstein, we should say peace be upon his name. Yeah. 
That's what you should do. Or, 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 crowd. Uh, peace be upon order. him, that's fantastic. Yeah, peace, peace be upon him, Cra- Lo- Lo- Lawrence Kraut. Every time someone says Einstein, uh, that's what we should do. Say peace be upon all him. All of them. All of them. Um, no, Kraut. specifically Einstein. <laughs> peace be upon him, I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Send any of you on your challenge. Uh, again, please. Any update on your challenge? Um, nope. No one sent anything whatsoever. But maybe, maybe people need to prepare time to prepare. Well, pl- plug it. This is being recorded, Cinder. So just su- br- briefly summarize what it is and how they can contact you. Oh, um, uh, can I do it in like five minutes? I have to end the game, and it will need too much concentration <laughs> on both sides. Okay. Yeah, just that's it. Instead of actually doing it, demonstrate just how seriously you take it. That's wonderful. I'll do it for you. So Zinder's got a three-part angle of attack challenge. He's offering five thousand dollars, albeit in funny money, but you don't need to worry about that. But five thousand dollars equivalent for somebody to demonstrate that you can get something to disappear from the bottom up on a proven flat surface. So that's the first part of the challenge. The third part of the challenge is to come with come up with the mathematical formulas for how things disappear from bottom up, angle of attack, all of these things incorporated. More details are available from Zinder. And the second part of the challenge is to bring something back that has disappeared from bottom up by increasing the aperture. So step one, make something disappear on a proven flat surface, obviously up to adjudication for how you prove it's flat. There are no rules in that regard. It's down to you to demonstrate to satisfaction of whoever, Zinder presumably, that it is actually flat. Second part being that you bring back something from the refract- the diffraction limit, i.e. it's already gone to your camera, iPhone, whatever. You increase the size of the aperture and bring the thing back. Uh, that's the second part of the challenge. Third part of the challenge is to actually provide demonstrable mathematics for how these relationships work mathematically. Is that pretty accurate, Cinder? Um, yes, it is. And on, on the flat surface part, um, I can show you later the document uh, Anthony um, kind of uh, corrected and uh, added some things. There, there is, with, ki- with pretty, let's say, with enough precision, is described what I consider as uh, proven to be flat and how you can... Um, uh, uh, how you can make a way around it, let's say, in other words, um, so you don't have to uh, pr- to make the experiment or make the test on a proven to be flat surface. Sure, there's, in other words, what you're saying is there's a little bit of wiggle room and there's yeah. various methods that are satisfactory as opposed to, you know, beyond any reasonable doubt. Yes. Gotcha. Julio? What's, what's, well, at the very least, email address, and then that will at least round it out with a lot of help from me. Oh, sure. Um, here. I, I am going to post it in the chat, too. After. Wait. No. Um, I think you can present it to the people, right? So they just can read it. Second, just, uh, just for people who are listening to this, Z Y N D E R A G E at gmail dot com. Anything else to be covered? Am I waiting for some ink, or shall I round out the after show? Well, j- j- just a moment about the flat surface. Just. Um, just to be mentioned, um, it, it, I wrote down if the surface isn't flat, an unevenness of 10% is allowed under following condition. A proven to be free line of sight from the bottommost part, um, the part that is nearest to the surface, to the aperture, to the bottommost part of the object. So um, that means uh, if, if, you, if you don't have a flat surface, just prove that there is a free line of sight. So you don't have to prove the surface is flat. Cool. Anything else anybody wants to get in before I round out this after show? No. Not really. Well, maybe one thing. You're going to plug Earth's your flat channel. Flat Go ahead, Arwin. Make Earth flat again. And subscribe to Arwin. 
So with that, I'll say a massive, huge, enormous thank you to all of today's debating panel for making this debate possible, the spectacular that it was. Also, a massive thank you to all of the premiering audience in Nathan Oakley 1980. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and check out the forum on nathanoakley.com. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!